the EPA comes into your life and tells you, no, you're not going to build there because we say so. Not with any facts. It is their opinion. That is a very tough thing to swallow when you're a taxpayer in this country. The EPA wanted to make a point and say, we have the authority in this country to tell you where you can and cannot build. Until the Supreme Court took up the Sackett's case, every federal court of appeals in this country had ruled against the position that the Sackett's were articulating. Mike and Chantel Sackett dreamed of building a beautiful home in Priest Lake, Idaho. When I was in high school, I was up there camping and fell in love with Priest Lake. I remember coming home, told my mom and dad that I was going to move to Priest Lake, and they just said, oh, no, you're not. And I said, yeah, yeah, I am. I will figure it out. In the summertime, oh, there's no other place you'd want to be. It is so peaceful and calm, pristine. In 2008, the Sacketts purchased a modest plot of land in a subdivision bordering Priest Lake and prepared to build a home. This was our, this was where we were going to live for the rest of our life, as, as far as we were concerned. This was going to be our, our home home. The Sacketts own an excavating business and are accustomed to navigating the building permit process, which is why they were all the more shocked when officials from the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers showed up just three days after they'd begun to clear the lot and fill in the foundation with gravel. The gentleman that was there that was working, he said they walked onto the property and said, you need to stop work immediately, and he said, why? They said, because we think you're filling in wetland. Chantel and her office manager tried to reason with the EPA over the phone but got nowhere. Well, do you have anything in writing? And they said no. Well, do you have like a stop work order or anything? And they said no. Do you have any proof that shows that that lot is in a, in a wetlands? No, we don't need any. We think you're working in a wetland. The official told the Sacketts that their property was listed in the National Wetlands Inventory and was therefore under the jurisdiction of the EPA, except there was one problem. When we pulled up the coordinates, on that piece of property where our lot was, there was no wetland there. When I called her and told her that, she goes, well, it's not always correct. It's a tool we use. And I said, okay, so you're going to stop me from working on our property that we paid for because of a national wetland inventory that isn't always correct. How does that work? Without further explanation, the EPA issued the Sackets a compliance order, claiming that they were building on wetlands and therefore violating the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act passed in 1972 in order to restore and maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of the nation's waters. Violation of this act results in fines up to $37,500 a day. The Sacketts hired scientists to inspect their landlocked property, and they couldn't find any evidence of wetlands. The EPA wasn't offering any evidence either. In the meantime, the fines were racking up. You go to bed with that on your mind every night. It's been painful personally, it's been painful on our business, and we've had employees leave because there's employees that are looking at us like, well, these guys, you they know, if they get this fine, they're done. It's a horrible thing to have to think about it every day. If the Sacketts gave in to the EPA, they would be required to restore the land to its natural state and actually plant non-native plants that are found in wetlands, thus transforming their previously dry property into protected wetlands. You can't win because they back you in. And when you do what they tell you to do, you just made your property a wetland. Facing no other viable option, the Sacketts decided to fight the EPA's compliance order in court. Unfortunately for them, this also was not an option. We will not allow you to sue the EPA, is what they said twice. The EPA took the position that because they were not actually enforcing the penalties yet, that the compliance order amounted to nothing more than a warning and could therefore not be challenged in court. Remarkably, the District Court and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals agreed with the EPA. The government cannot take from you your life, your liberty, or your property without first giving you, as the Constitution calls it, due process of law. Damien Schiff is an attorney at the Pacific Legal Foundation, which took up the Sackett's case against the EPA. We invited officials from the EPA and the Department of Justice to participate in this video as well, but they declined. The Sackett's hired wetlands experts, soil scientists, hydrologists, and their conclusion is that 
there are not wetlands on this property. EPA has told them, you cannot use your property, you must pay a fine, your property will become a de facto wetlands preserve for the indefinite future, and we're going to take your property away from you effectively without giving you any notice, without giving you any hearing, without giving you any opportunity to present contrary evidence. Millions of dollars in potential fines accumulated over the years as the courts denied the Sacketts the right to even have their challenge to the compliance order heard. Damien says, you know, the only place we can go. I said, I know, that's not easy. I said, yeah, but what choice do we have? He said it's like winning the lotto yeah. to get to the Supreme Court. But the Sacketts won that lottery and had their case heard by the Supreme Court in January of 2012. The EPA proceeded to argue that the Sacketts had no right to challenge a compliance order because the Clean Water Act was intended to preclude pre-enforcement judicial review of the order. The problem is, the only way the Sacketts could ever get judicial review that way is by ignoring the compliance order and racking up potentially millions of dollars in fines. And even then, not having certainty that EPA will bring a lawsuit. EPA might still just sit on its hands and let the possible fines pile up. EPA also says its ability to protect the environment would be substantially undermined if compliance order recipients could immediately hail the agency into court and that compliance orders obviate the need for judicial intervention by inducing compliance. Individuals' private property rights and other constitutionally protected liberties are being violated every day by this agency. And what does the agency say? The agency says it doesn't want to go into court. It shouldn't have to go into court to defend these very actions that are violating the rights of the people. The chutzpah, the arrogance, is frankly almost unimaginable. For now, the Sacketts must wait for the Supreme Court's ruling, but they are cautiously optimistic. We had a good day in court. We were both surprised with some of the questions that came from the justices. They were questions that we would have asked. Without the taxpayers in this country, they don't exist. So why do they get to come into people's lives and turn them upside down? That's a darn good question that, that needs to be answered.